So right now I'd look, like to look at something called diagonal sheathing. We don't see it on very many houses. I mean, we, you know, I'd say like one out of a hundred, you know, practically none of them, but it is there and it's really important to know about because it has a big impact on any retrofit. Now the one place we do see a lot of diagonal sheathing is on either side of a garage door opening in San Francisco. Pretty much every house we look at has that and they do that to stabilize the wall. So I'm going to show you in a little bit more about that right now. So the way you tell diagonal sheathing is you have a wall that, you know, the siding is at an angle. So you can see this is the siding, this is the wood siding right here and it's going at an angle angle like this. You see another one right next to it at an angle like this. And then it'll be nailed here into the mud sill. Usually three to four nails uh, go into this. And then the great thing about diagonal sheathing is normally we see it along the entire wall. So it'll go way up there. It's not just in the cripple wall. It'll go way, way up high. So, um, and it'll be, you know, it'll be nailed into the top plate right here. So let's go ahead and look and see what the code has to say about this material. It's you know, really surprising uh, how, you know, actually how, how strong it is. So as you can see in this row that's highlighted by yellow that represents diagonal sheathing, uh, there's, it has a fair amount of capacity. This right here on the chart where it says sheathing nominal dimensions, what that means is that rather than being a full one inches thick, it's only three quarters of an inch thick. Or right here where it says two inches thick, it's actually an inch and a half thick. But no matter which ones you use and what configuration, uh, you know, and how, how they're nailed, they're all worth uh, 600 pounds per linear foot. And that's quite a bit. 600 pounds per linear foot is, you know, that's actually stronger than uh, plywood, which is nailed uh, <clears throat> three inches on center, three inches apart uh, with eight penny nails. However, there is something where we have to reduce it. And there's a section there that says nominal unit shear capacity shall be adjusted in accordance with 4.2.3 to determine ASD allowable unit shear capacity. In other words, that's the same as you would find in the shear wall tables, the same type of uh, rating that you would find in the shear tables. And what that section says is you must divide by two. So when you look at the uh, diagonal sheathing, this number right here, you divide by two. And that is your actual rating for the plywood relative to shear walls. Now, if you have an entire wall that's you know braced with diagonal sheathing, it's in pretty good shape. Because in a regular retrofit, you'll usually do maybe a quarter of the wall, maybe. Um, you know, probably, you know, that's, that's normal at, you know, maybe 600 pounds or 500 pounds per linear foot. But if you do the, if the entire wall already, can resist 300 pounds per linear foot, I would put that on my low, you know, part of the bottom of my list in terms of things I need to do on my house. I, you know, I'd look at a kitchen remodel or something before I'd look at that. Now, the one thing I do want to point out, which is fairly important, is it says right here in the building code for new construction that single and double diagonal sheet lumber walls shall not be used to resist seismic forces. Now, that's simply because plywood is available. So they're not going to have people, you know, putting in, you know, uh, diagonal sheathing when plywood would work. Plus, nobody in their right mind would do it anyway because it'd be so expensive. But anyway, that's for new construction. It's not allowed. But, you know, overall, it really can resist uh, earthquakes pretty well. And that's something that I would consider. I'd like to go back to table 4.2D and show you something important. So you see here where it says horizontal lumber sheathing. That means boards that are just going left or right. Um, you see it all the time. You go by any house. It's you know, made out of wood. If you look be underneath the stucco, you'll see the exact same thing. It's just a board that goes left or right and not at an angle, which is what diagonal sheathing is. So when it's horizontal like that, and it's, you know, no matter, you know, how big it is, it's a two by six, a two by eight, a, you know, whatever it is, as far as the thickness of the wood, no matter how many nails you put in it, it ends up being only 100 pounds per linear foot. Now, that's why we retrofit houses is because it's so small. Now, if we take that and then we divide, you know, like we did when we used uh, this, this footnote right here, when we divide that by two, 
Um, you know, these walls don't have a lot of capacity. You know, the stucco has a lot of capacity, which is over the uh, this horizontal sheathing, but as soon as the stucco fails, then you just have the horizontal sheathing, and it's simply not enough to hold the house up. So this is actually the reason that we retrofit a house. This is why we put plywood on a house, is because this horizontal sheathing just doesn't have the amount of strength we need. Now, for some reason, there's a table in the California Existing Building Code which has different values for um, some of the things that we just discussed. And I'm going to show you what those things are. Now, this table is the table A4-A, -A, allowable values for existing buildings, materials. This is a really, really valuable uh, table when you're doing seismic retrofit work because you want to know what you have, you know, what's, what's there in the house. Uh, what's the value what values does it have and there is a part of the website that goes into this in, in further detail but we're just going to go ahead and look at the part that uh, has to do with diagonal sheathing so this right here is where we're going to find it in horizontal diaphragms now a diaphragm is uh you know it's it's either a wall or it's a floor or it's a roof it's just basically a big you know rectangular uh you know element made out of boards made out of wood so this one is here we talk they're going to be talking about floors which is a diaphragm then they're going to talk about roofs which is a diaphragm and then also we later on we hear, we see uh, information about vertical diaphragms which is a wall so anyway let's see what it says so it says here with roofs with straight sheathing and roofing applied directly to the sheathing can resist 100 pounds per your foot now the roofing you know the shingles they don't count for anything they're not going to have any capacity at all all the capacity is going to be in the uh, diagonal in the in the horizontal uh, sheathing and here it gives a value of 100 pounds per your foot which we saw in just saw in the in the other table but here there's no need to divide by two so it's just kind of weird in one section we have you know diag uh, horizontal siding that can resist uh, 50 pounds per your foot and here we have you know horizontal boards can resist 100 pounds per your foot I have no idea why that is but I just want to show it to you and now when we come down here we see floors with diagonal sheathing and finished wood flooring that's at 600 pounds per linear foot. So just to let you know what that is, those are boards that are under, under the floor that are angled, just like we saw, but, uh, but on a wall. And then they have um, oak overlay that, that you walk around on. That's what that means. So here we get a 600 pounds per linear foot, just like we saw before. But again, you don't divide by two. Now the next one we see is this other one here where it's 500 pounds per foot for a seismic shear. And that one here is floors with straight sheathing and finished wood flooring with board edges offset or perpendicular. So basically that's the same thing. The one is you have diagonal sheathing. Sheathing is what you nail the finished material to. So you nail the, the uh, oak to the, uh, to the sheathing. So in one case you have horizontal boards with the oak uh, overlay at an angle. And then the other one is you have the, uh, you have the diagonal sheathing with the oak overlay that is straight. So that's, that's pretty much it. So anyway, I don't understand why these values are, this, are different. They seem like they're talking about more or less the same thing. And one's in the California existing building codes, one's in the national design specification. Uh, actually, it's in the uh, special division, uh, special design provision for wind and seismic, and they seem to contradict each other. And uh, anyway, I just want to point this out. So I hope you found this information on diagonal sheathing helpful. This is kind of, you know, a retrofit propeller head would be interested in this sort of thing. But, you know, if you're doing your house or if you're a contractor and you happen to see this diagonal sheathing, you know, you may just want to leave it alone. One thing I would like to say is that, you know, maybe look and, sh you know, see if there's been a lot of dirt that's been touching the bottom where the diagonal sheathing is nailed to the mud sill. If the nails are rusted out, naturally this won't, you know, work particularly well. But if everything's pretty solid, you know, I certainly, if I had a nice long wall and had diagonal sheathing, I probably wouldn't even touch it except put some bolts in. One thing I'd like for you to do is to, in the comments section, let me know if this information was helpful and especially if you even knew that diagonal sheathing could be so earthquake resistant. I'm just trying to figure out who has this knowledge and who doesn't. So it'd be great to hear from you if, you know, if you were aware of this and if it's, especially if it's helpful to you.